All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. You're just in time for the latest. We'll let you know what's happening in about two hours or so from now. That's around 11 a.m. The Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education examination results should be released. The 699,745 students who sat for the KCAC will then know the results that they scored. This is two days ago. The Kenya National Examination Council Board had usually held a meeting to approve the results ahead of their submission to the head of state. That has already happened and therefore at 11 a.m. those results will be announced. As soon as that happens, we'll definitely take you there. But we are holding a very interesting conversation here before we get into the news. You see this book I'm holding right now? Yeah, if you can just zoom in and see it. Most of the students and children are back home right now as we speak. And I'm sure you've seen most of them on their gadgets all the time. What they do with their gadgets sometimes, the parents don't even know. Some, some of those children are even more tech savvy than the parents themselves. So this book is from the Communications Authority of Kenya. It's a guide to child online protection. I'll be left with some copies here, so if you need any of them, just get in touch with us on our social media platform at Trevor Mbij at Citizen TV Kenya. And I'll, I'll definitely give you a copy if you're a parent out there. It has very interesting things in there. I've just been going through it, of course, I've just received it now. But joining me in studio is Mrs. Masi Wanjao. Thank you so much for coming in. Come She's on. the Acting Director General Communications Authority of Kenya. So, just be, before we get into this book, mm -hmm. Mercy, and uh, what are the do's and don'ts when it comes to so social media engagement and online, gen generally for everybody else first? Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Trevor. Uh, the internet is a new space. It's a very engaging space, and uh, it's one in which you can learn a lot and be exposed to new worlds that, uh, you know, that excite and entertain. But at the same time, the internet comes with a lot of unintended uh, consequences because both for adults and children, if the engagement on that platform lacks hygiene, in the sense of safe and secure access, then mm. it can be a dangerous place to be in. And I talk about it, especially at this time when children are at home yeah. during the holiday season, spending a lot of time watching TV, listening to the radio, and even on their gadgets. Mm. It's very important for parents and guardians to be vigilant yeah. and uh, be interested to see what the child is consuming, mm. because um, there's a lot of content appropriate and inappropriate, and uh, that needs to be very closely guided. Yeah. Um, when it comes to internet use, um, sometimes you find that people are very flippant about passwords and, uh, you know, we'll use them and leave them. And it calls for a high exercise of high cyber hygiene mm. that uh, one would uh, keep that password safe and secure. And uh, especially when transacting online, online transactions, buying things, and even on the phone. Um, Lately, there has been a rise of, you know, people receiving phone calls, being asked to provide certain information so that, uh, you know, something can be done on their phone and they give out this information. Mm. During this season, when it's festive and there's a lot happening, I think I uh, would like to encourage uh, the consumers to be, to up their vigilance yeah. um, as they interact with these uh, gadgets and on these platforms. And you've spoken about lack of hygiene online. And yeah. I see here on this book that you just gave me a few moments ago, mm -hmm. Cyberbullying, yes. at the lowest part there, it talks about research showing that children and teenagers rarely ever tell their adults about their experiences of online bullying yes. and do not fully capitalize on the tools provided by communication technologies yes. to prevent future incidents. So how do we deal with this then? Our parents Should the parents not give their children the gadgets? How, how do they do it because if they don't report yeah then how how, how can the apparent monitor um i th i think it is not futuristic not yeah. to give the children the gadget it's like saying don't go on the road because mm. an accident can happen and this is why the communications authority of kenya is very committed in creating sensitization yeah. and awareness so that as the child goes on to the gadget they are aware how should i communicate should i share my details to what extent what is the kind of behavior that is appropriate on this platform? How do I recognize when the boundaries have been crossed? Yeah. And more importantly, when that happens, what do I do? Communicate with a trusted adult, let them know what the experience has been so that they can walk out of that with their image and security intact. Mm. Yes. And I also see on page 11, there's a, a whole topic on child pornography. Yes. And this, what are the most startling statistics about this and how should they be handled henceforth? Okay. Because this also takes very many forms. I see there's nudity, there's erotic posing, there's explicit sexual activity. 
Um, unfortunately, uh, when children are accessing information, um, sometimes uh, that access will lead to content that is of an adult nature yeah. because a lot of this kind of pornography is couched in names that also are similar, for example, to cartoons. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why it then becomes important for the child to be aware, the parents and guardians to be aware. There are also technical solutions like parental controls that are installed in gadgets so that uh, it sort of acts as a filter to safeguard the child and what they may access. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's a shared responsibility and the war can only be won when the user, the child, is yeah. aware. Yeah. Yes. And this, this uh, like I mentioned, this book, book is very interesting because now there's also another issue here for page 13 and page 12, mm -hmm. internet addiction. Yes. What forms does this take and how does it progress? Um, very sadly, unfortunately, because of the engaging nature yeah. of these platforms, um, adults and children can spend too much time. By too much time, I mean too much time at the expense of conducting your day-to-day -day affairs, at the expense of being able to, man uh, to manage uh, time uh, in an ordinary day, and that has its own disastrous consequences. Mm -hmm. So there are rules of etiquette and hygiene around that. For example, do not switch on the computer unless you're switching it on for a certain purpose. Yeah. When you go online, do what you set out to do. And often people stray mm. and go into other things. And that can lead into addiction, yeah. which, is not, which is a very unintended consequence. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you know then that your child is addicted? Um, there are just certain general observations. You're sitting with them and how will you tell? Uh, one of them, the one obvious one, is when you realize that the child prefers to spend time alone on a gadget. Mm. So too much time spent on a gadget, yeah. not a good thing. Two, if you notice that the child is struggling to keep up with their day-to-day -day issues, like to do homework mm. or to perform other household chores at the expense of being on a gadget, bad sign. Mm. Three, if that child prefers not to talk to people, to engage with family members and have conversations because they are on a gadget, those are not good signs. And when asked if the child gets defensive, yeah that also should be a flag that uh, something needs to be watched very closely yeah. and nipped in the bud. Okay. Yeah. So practically speaking, say a parent is seated there and the child is on the phone, what are the best ways of ensuring that they're ac accessing only uh -huh. friendly content? Do you randomly pick the phone and take a look at what they're doing, check their history? Uh -huh. How do you do it practically? That's one of them, and yeah. that's a very good question you ask, because yeah. most parents will buy computers and gadgets for their children for education purposes, yeah. that the child will be able to perform better, they'll be able to do research and all that. So one of the cautions I would say is, children should not use gadgets in private, in the bedroom, in the toilet, mm. in a closed space. It should be in the sitting area where everybody is there. Okay. Two, as they use the gadget, the face of the gadget should be a face that is visible to others. Mm. So that that way, it doesn't look intrusive, but the parent has an eye on what the child is consuming. Yeah. yeah. Because now the other thing is, what happens when the child is alone? Because we know parents nowadays are all just looking for money, Always mm. at work. Mm. What do you do? Do you keep the phone until you come back? <laughs> what yeah. Happens? Well, in but a situation a, like a, that, something we're dealing with in this era. Back yes. in the day, it was a yes. really a concern. In a situation like that, it yeah. helps that the gadget that the child has has parental controls installed. Okay. So already there is a filter that guards against that. But as we said, even with the best of filters, sometimes mm. things do come through. So looking back at the history mm. to be able to trace what the child has looked at is very, very um, important. Yeah. But as you said when you were beginning, children are often more tech savvy than the parents. Mm. So the, the child who is very suave will perhaps delete yeah. history if they know they've been doing the inappropriate thing. Yeah. So as I said before, the war will be won mm. with awareness okay. and sensitization so that the child is aware mm. upfront. What's so, the right thing to so do? So is it better for the parent to preempt what is going to be there or yes. just to hope that they don't access it? Because, for example, when there was an issue of the consolata child who was mm. threatening another one, mm. that video circulated all over and yes. the students were sharing amongst themselves. Yes. In that case, should you then ask your child whether they've seen that video and give them guidance before they see it? Yes. Or do you just wait and pray that they didn't see it? I think it's the substance of a continuing conversation yeah. because these incidences will keep morphing. And uh, during this time, for example, people mm. will spend will be more relaxed 
it is wrong for example to videotape somebody in uh, that relaxed and casual manner and spread that kind of a video yeah. or to even circulate other inappropriate content yeah. so um it's a, it is a caution it is part of awareness creation that when you use these platforms use them responsibly mm. at all times mm. because liability will attach if people decide to take action in some of these incidences yeah. yeah and also the other thing is uh, how do you guide the kinds of friends they accept do you tell them that before you accept any friend request yeah. let, run it by me first yeah. how does that work that's a whole I'm new just, conversation yeah, because <laughs> i'm just thinking for a parent who's <laughs> yeah. at home what do you yes. do then it's a whole new conversation and uh, much has been said for example about children signing a contract yeah. with a parent or guardian on what they will do for as long as they have the gadget and if they overstep that then this gadget will be withdrawn um cyber bullying and cyber stalking yeah. will often happen because a child accepted a friend request of somebody they didn't know or who pretended to be who they thought they were yeah. and um often it is recommended that a child admits a parent as a friend mm. onto that platform so that the parent is also able to be in that ecosystem mm. and to see what is uh, what is happening as a safeguard yeah. yeah so the parent can also see the interactions around yes. that yes okay so this whole issue of the children so what wh- how what happens do you when you realize there's something there's some online abuse how do you handle it um, you encountered a situation where you see that most likely your child you've seen the history there's something that is not adding up what do you do Um one of the first things is to uh, withdraw the child from that platform yeah. and have a conversation and depending on what has happened it actually might go to the extent of medical intervention in the form of counseling and the others mm. if it is a crime an online fraud uh cyber stalking cyber bullying also the computer incident response team at the communications authority of Kenya is a 24/7 um security safe security and safeguard um mechanism yeah. they would need to report there for that issue to be investigated yeah. and put uh, to rest okay yes. and i'm already running some of those uh, hotlines underneath the screen you can see the numbers there and also the email address in case of anything that you need to report that's how you get in touch with the communications authority of Kenya and as we wind up i'd like to talk about online businesses mm-hmm. the risks how do you now know which one is the right one to deal with because there've been a lot of incidences of Kenyan saying that I was swindled by these guys they advertised online I sent my money I never got the products yeah um increasingly a lot of business is going online which is good because it exposes the business to customers who ordinarily would not come in through the door as you interact on that platform yeah. one it is very important to ensure that that website is safe yeah. the dot ke is a Kenyan domain made in Kenya yeah. that assures you that the business inc is in Kenya and uh, therefore your customer experience is safeguarded under the legislative framework yeah. in Kenya and should an incident arise under dot ke then reporting to the communications authority of Kenya would be the first yeah. place uh, to go two if it involves payment of money and all that then it is important to ensure that the sec- the platform is safe and secure before you transmit money and you're able to verify that um in terms of reputation the credentials before you send your money to min- minimize yeah. the risk okay yeah. and so uh, once i report an abuse or something that i saw at what point do i expect some kind of response how long does it take does um, you see you have a timeline yes this is actually a very rapid response yeah. because one of the mandates of the authority is to promote trust and confidence mm. on the online platform and on e-transactions and indeed it is one of the growth pillars under the digital transformation uh platform mm. in this in this country so normally we will take up to about 7 days at the max yeah. to investigate however the caution is not all crimes are local some might require collaboration that is international and yeah. because of that it involves more parties and might take a little more time before it is finally resolved but you will advise on the email once yes, that happens yes yes yeah. it's a constant uh, advisory yeah. to ensure that we are able to put the issue back to rest okay. as best as possible i'm fascinated by how simple this book is yeah. and it's actually a guide to child online protection is yes. it available to the public that they yes. are aware that it's yes. even there yes this is yeah. a, pa- a flagship publication which we are very proud of yeah. at the authority and uh, one of uh, one of our key uh, awareness tools so if people would be interested in it consumers parents guardians and yeah. even children we are happy 
to supply this either through the authority or they can call here. This is one of our tools for awareness creation. Okay. Yeah. So I know you leave some of them with yes. me and also yes. parents can access them, but anybody else who's in a different place who's not here, how do they get them? They can, the they can reach out to yeah. the communications authority. Yeah. If you receive more than the, the packages that we have left here, we can bring in some more. All right. Yes. Thank you so much yeah. for making time yeah. for us. Thank and you. also, uh, you need to highlight some of the issues that you've picked out. Yeah, yes. In summary now. As yes. A parting shot for yes. that. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. I can summarize it in five. Yeah. One, during this festive season, yeah. up your cyber hygiene. Keep your passwords safe yeah. and interact um, online on your phones in a responsible manner. Two, be vigilant on what your children are consuming on the various platforms. Three, Guard your data jealously as you go to the very many spots and interact variously. Four, refrain from sharing news and images that are inappropriate. And five, uh, with the excitement to communicate, yeah. do not use your gadget as you drive. Okay. Either put it on speaker or stop by the side of the road yeah. to engage. That way, I think it, it assures you and the rest of us of a pleasant festive season. All right, that's yeah. a fantastic uh, yeah. summary. Yeah. Cyber hygiene, vigilance, guard data, refrain from imp improper yes. sharing of content and do not use your gadgets while you drive. Right. Thank you so yeah. much for making time. Yeah, great. This is Masi Wenjao, Acting Director, General Communications Authority of Kenya. And listen, like I mentioned earlier on, some of these books will be left with us. So if you need any of them, just get in touch with us at Citizen TV Kenya, Trevor Mbija, and we'll make sure you get a copy as well. It's a guide to child online protection when the children are around right now you may need to monitor how they interact on social media we're taking a quick break here on daybreak when we come back i'll be giving you an update of the kcc results which are supposed to be launched at around 11 a.m we have our reporters at the kenya national uh, kenya national education council that's neck and he'll be speaking to us about the results that 699,745 candidates get to know what they scored during the kcc exams that right after the break see you in a bit